On the Discovery 3, we had some dashboard lights that were illuminated. 8. Brake warning light. 11. ABS indicator. 42. DSC. If you attempted to move the vehicle, the following would also light up. 47. Suspension system. One of the lights that failed to illuminate. 45. HDC. We lost the terrain response system, which would not illuminate when turning the dial. Also, the gearbox warning display came on, and air suspension failed to operate. We completed a diagnostics check. These are the faults that showed for the rear diff motor. The checks we did were for the module which controls the motor, which is positioned in the panel behind the passenger rear seat. When the rear diff electric motor assembly fails, these are all the parts that will be affected as they are all linked. This is the first port of call. There are two types of rear diff for a Discovery 3. One has an electric motor and gear on the top, denoted by arrow. First, remove the spare wheel. This will give you access to bolts you will need to undo. You will then need to jack up the passenger side rear of the vehicle and place the axle stand in the correct position under the chassis to support the vehicle. You can then remove the rear passenger wheel. This will enable you to have access to the diff motor. If you do not have a ramp, and are doing this on your driveway. There are two long bolts through the subframe which holds the diff in place. You will need to place a bottle jack under the diff to support it, then remove the two bolts. To do this you will need a long 21mm socket, an 18mm spanner. Once the two bolts are removed, jack up the diff gently. This will help you get to the wiring connector and the two small bolts. Number one, there are three little lugs that hold this little connector on. Prise it off gently and allow it to drop down in a controlled manner. Number two, the pipe can be carefully flexed round to the left, giving you access to the connector and the two bolts. This is the connector you will need to unscrew. There are two bolts at the back of the motor, which you can get access to the same way as you did the connector. You will need an 8mm socket with mini wrench and a ratchet spanner for these two bolts. Removing the bottle jack and allowing the diff to safely drop Slide yourself underneath the vehicle with care and remove the front two bolts. You can use a quarter 8mm socket and wrench for this. Now you can remove the motor by lifting it round the diff, bringing it through the front of the diff and between the exhaust system. You may need to jack the diff up slightly to remove it. There are three little screws that hold this cover plate on. Remove screws and lift cover plate gently. Behind the cover plate would be some wiring, a red cable and a green cable. These cables will be thicker than other cables. If you have a battery charger and two small connectors with a piece of cable, you can make your own connector to test the motor. Finding the positions of these cables through the wiring socket at the front you should be able to test to see if the motor is working. If the motor is not working, you will need a motor replacement. If the motor is working, there is another way of checking the gears. See as follows. There are four cap head screws 
Remove these screws. It will separate the motor from the gearbox. With a pin punch, remove the pin. Then remove the gear from the motor. With the gear removed off the motor, offer it up to the needle bearings inside the gearbox. If the pin flops around inside, it means the needle bearings are worn and you will need to purchase this unit as a separate. Now check this gear which is inside the diff. Rock it backwards and forwards. It will not move a lot but will tell you that there is play in movement and not seized. Ensure the top of the diff is clean for attaching the gearbox and motor. You will need to place new sealant on the face of the gearbox to give it an oil tight seal. You can then reassemble the unit. We found turning the ignition on and off a few times without turning over the engine removed all dash lights and the car seemed to be miraculously back together. Asking the question about the diff motor to a garage, the gentleman's explanation of removing it was to take off both rear prop shafts, exhaust system, drive shaft and diff completely, which we thought was quite a bit of work to reach one bit of the motor. The way we did it, although a bit awkward at times, was a quicker way. We hope this video helps. Thank you for watching.